Welcome to That Entrepreneur Life, a podcast about entrepreneurship that takes you from idea to launch and beyond. Beyond. Each week, your hosts, Andrew Lees and Clint McPherson, discuss different business topics aimed at adding value to any entrepreneur's journey. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. Today, I'm interviewing um, Vivian Puello by myself, which I'm excited about. Andrew Lee's actually my co-host, can't be here today. But without further ado, again, I'm so excited. I want to go ahead and kick this episode off by interviewing and, and introducing Viviana Puello to the show. How are you doing today? Great, Clint. Thanks so much. So super excited to be here. So I just... Can't wait to share a lot with you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And Viviana, I'm so excited that you're here and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on our podcast. And it's an honor to have you on the show, especially all the research I did. I was amazed and blown away about how much stuff you currently have going on. And, it, and it's just amazing as entrepreneurs, you know, sometimes we don't even know where to start. We don't even know how to get started. But once you do, once you once once things start falling in place, it's just amazing how other things can come into your life and, and you have so much going on. And that's why I'm so excited to have you on the show. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And before we before we launch into everything, can you quickly share with our audience like who you are and what you're all about? Yes. So I am a New York based art business expert and artist entrepreneur by accident. Uh, coach and most of anything passionate about helping other creative entrepreneurs make a living doing what they love. And I am the founder and the CEO of Art Tour International, which is a multimedia platform dedicated to promoting artists worldwide. The platform expands to print and digital publications, an award-winning TV show, international exhibitions and events, and more. And we're now celebrating our 10th anniversary, uh, reaching 2 million readers worldwide and serving uh, talented people in about 198 countries. So it's exciting. <laughs> no, I, I, lo I love all of that. I mean, and as an award-winning artist, um, a writer, an entrepreneur, can you take our, my audience back to when your entrepreneurial journey actually started and what it yeah. is about entrepreneurship that you're excited about? Um, I can, I'm going to start backwards here yeah. and I tell you um, what it is that is exciting about uh, being an entrepreneur is the freedom of making your dreams come true because everything can happen and everything is possible. And when you discover that, it's like a drug for me. For me, it's like just creating and creating and creating now because there was a time in my life, and that was my beginning, when I was very shy. I started, uh, if I go back to childhood, I had a very difficult childhood. So I grew up shy, introvert, and about, I think when I was about 12, I discovered art in school, and that hooked me. And it hooked me to a different world. You know, I didn't have to talk to a lot of people. I could just be there. And it started making me more secure about myself, more confident. I uh, started getting better grades because you know how it is when you're not, you know, you know, uh, confident. And that made me fall in love with art. So I became an artist. Um, I started something totally different, which was which is business administration, because my family thought you're never gonna make a living if you're an artist. And I grew up with that belief. So art was my psychic. It was like, okay, I'll just have it there because I know I cannot make money with this. But I was miserable. I I did administration. I was I had a good job. Uh, then I was doing sales and I was making money, but I was not happy. And I was really miserable. I went through a very bad depression time and started painting. Again, you know, painting was always in my life. I mean, I would do it for a little while, forget about it, do it again. And this time it was really uh, something that shook me because I stopped painting for about five years and went into a deep hole of, you know, let me just work and make money, make money, make money, buy things, buy things. And all of a sudden I realized, you know what, this, this is not making me happy. <laughs> this is not working. 
Um, so I, you know, I had a dream about painting, long story, and started painting. I rented a small studio. Um, I remember the room of the studio was split in four pieces with duct tape so that each artist would pay it a little bit. <laughs> That's how I started with the art in the art world. And and from there, I went into a full giving myself to painting, giving myself to music, giving myself to art and started working with other artists, helping other artists. I always had that gift of I wanted to, you know, do marketing. I had that experience and I brought it with me and I started helping other artists and created Vivid Arts Network, which is an organization that is dedicated to exhibiting the artist works in different locations. And I had that dream of traveling to a different country and had that opportunity in 2008. And I went to Italy. And when I went there, I saw the world with a different, you know, view. It was like my view expanded. And I thought, well, you know, I think I can do more uh, than this. And I, I organized an event over there. In 2011, during my a trip from back and forth from Italy, I actually had this vision of why don't we have art magazines that are fun to see? And, and that's how Art International started, with a vision in 2011. Uh, we started with 1,500 readers. That's where it went. So it was to... My artists that were working with me, their family, grandma, grandpa, <laughs> That's, that was our audience. And I had two incredible breakthroughs in my journey. And I have to admit, I don't think, I think they were more of a God move. The first one was the launch of the magazine, which I went to visit a friend of mine in Florence. There was a convention of a, um, journalists, uh, ministers of cultures, like really big convention in Florence. And when I went there, I went, I went to see a theater where I wanted to have an event. And he said, you can't see the theater because there's an event going on. And he told me what it was. And I said, well, why don't you allow me to participate and I'll see the theater? And he's like, what? <laughs> you know, it's going on right now. And you don't have a presentation. I'm like, if you let me get on that stage for five minutes, I'll have a presentation ready. And I and he went in and found out that I could do it. And that was the launch of the magazine, like by you know, chance. I was in front of an audience of about 500 people. And I was so passionate. I gave this presentation like you have no, I mean, I gave it all. <laughs> and they, I partnered with some of these ministers of culture featuring their countries. That's how our tour international became, you know, international. We travel, we have traveled in 10 years, about 53 cities. And mm. that was huge for us. And yeah. Later on, on the third issue of their magazine, because I didn't know what I was doing, and I'm an artist, I feature a photography that was a replica of the girl with the pearl earring, you know, the painting. Mm -hmm. But the girl with the pearl earring on the painting, on the, on the cover, actually was with her breast exposed. Mm -hmm. And that got us to two million <laughs> readers just like that. Because it was very controversial. It was, mm -hmm. it was about um, basically not, not people not wanting to see that online and other people who loved it. So that was pretty much the journey has been incredible. But that was the beginning. Those were the first two years of our magazine. That's amazing. And I, I love your, I love the story behind all that. I mean, everything that that you just said is so powerful because you came out of your shell from for just from the love that you found in art. And and again, you, you were like, I can't make a living out of this. So you were doing all all of everything but what you loved or found what brought you to where you are and gave you that confidence. And then you having that one shot to give that presentation. 
and then you ne- going in there and saying, just give me five minutes. I mean, that's all I'm asking. And then you going in there and kill it. That right there is so inspirational from the start to the finish. I love every bit about that story. And it, and it says a lot about you, especially a lot about facing your fears initially, coming out of your shell, finding your love, and then circling back to that. Because I'm a firm believer, if you find and do something that you love, you're in the right place, right? You're never to the point where it's like, thank God it's Friday. I mean, I hate that saying one, one anyways. It's like, if, if you can't wait for the weekend, unless you have something like, you know, you're going out of town, I get it. We all look forward to going and, and going on vacation. But if you're not currently doing something that you can just be in and just so involved in that you just lose track of time. That's what you need to be doing for a living. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs or a lot of people that think they're like wantrepreneurs, right? They want to be entrepreneurs. They want to find the quick, the get rich quick scheme. They, they think they, they're doing what they love because they love money. But at the end of the day, they're not happy. And, and the people that aren't even entrepreneurs, they, they're in the system of it, this is the easy This is the easy way out, right? I have, I feel comfortable. I got a nine to five job. I go in every day and, you know, at the end of the day, I can't wait till it's Friday. Like, thank God it's Friday that I'm able to have the weekend, you know, from Friday to Sunday night. And then I get up and do it all over again. But as entrepreneurs, I'm a firm believer that you have to find something you love. And and I really love that it was art for you. And I, and I go back and I talk about this to a lot of individuals. It's like, Go back and we're all creative to a degree. Go back and see what you did as a kid. We all drew we all drew on paper. We all scribbled and one and and have we have a creative side to us as human beings. Right. And and if you allow yourself to be connected and not everybody is going to be connected in that way and continue that on. Um, but I think as as human beings, as we get older, we do lose our connection with art. We do lose our connection with creativity to a degree. Um, And then we we wander around aimlessly, not knowing our our way. And we get lost along it instead of just embracing and keeping that inside of us and knowing that like, hey, man, just revert back to your childhood and just think about what you wanted to be when you were younger. Look at what what you're doing now. Does does that make you happy? Really? Like you might be good at accounting. But are you really happy with what you're doing in your in your job right now? Because if it's not, you might love accounting. You might be a good accountant, but do that as your own thing and and embrace that and figure out a way to make sure that like I'm doing this and I'm happy every day I wake up. I can't wait to get into it. And, And that's where as entrepreneurs, I think a lot of people or just people that work the nine to five get it wrong in life. Yes. Do you know that I had the, um, I think it was, it was a gift. I remember when I was working and I was running around, I rented this, the studio that I told you, and I was going on the weekends and I was like that. I can wait till it's the weekend so I can go to the studio. <laughs> right. And I remember telling an artist, uh, an older artist, um, when I retire, that was my say, when I retire, I'm going right. to be and she said, no, don't wait when, for that because you might not have the energy mm. and you might not reach that age and you're going to die not doing what you love. Yeah. And that, that was the wake up call. It really was. Right. It not You were going to die cool. without finding that fulfillment in your life. Exactly. Right? You like never know how long are you going to last. Ex- exactly. <laughs> right? And you're working during the week and you, you can't wait to get to the weekend so you can do what you love. And that that is like, again, we get it so wrong. And it's like, I got it. Everybody, again, we're indoctrinated. Like if you go to college, you know, you're training for one thing. Yeah. And that thing is by the time you get your four year degree, it's outdated and obsolete. And now you're like, well, I need experience. OK, well, experience is is you can't even get a job there because somebody else that has the experience and might not even have a college degree gets that job before you and it, and sometimes it's frustrating you know and so it's like just find what you love stay committed and stay true to that path um and so that that leads me to my next question vivian i mean you told us basically your inspiration about behind you know art tour international 
How did you take it from that to where it is today to become that revolutionary multimedia platform aimed at, aimed at permit, mar, promoting artists worldwide? Because I think that's just genius. I mean, taking it from where you were to that, um, you know, just a magazine to that revolutionary multimedia platform. How did you get there? Yeah, well, first of all, I had this, I think when I started in the art industry, when I started and it's, it wasn't long ago, it, it was only about 11 years ago, uh, when we started r two International, everything was kind of outdated. Uh, and I was the younger, <laughs> the younger one in this industry, um, actually one of the few females, and I think maybe the only Latino female uh, CEO of, of an art magazine. I started with this this love for video. Um, I used to work for a TV station uh, as one of my part times when I was an artist. And I also met my husband in 2009 and we've been together the whole time that Art International has. So he's my co-founder and he's a, a video producer, a filmmaker. So we put those two passions together and that helped a lot, of course. And I used to read back then that video was going to be it for everything that has to do with marketing. And this is 11 years ago. So I decided we have to incorporate more than one media. And if what happened if print goes, you know, away, what happened? So let's make sure that we're digital. And I had that very clear in mind that I wanted to establish a platform that was going to last. So it was going to endure whatever hardship, if print goes away, we still have the digital. If digital is not fun, we're going to have video. So it, we, we started incorporating all this right away into the organization. So I created the R2 International show with the vision of having that show on, te on television. And it's still my dream. Um, we now have it, but we created it on YouTube. So we would travel. And to make things fun, I would showcase a location because that was my partnership with all these ministers that I, I would showcase a location, but at the same time I would interview and, and you know, show the artworks and the artists that were there. And that really, I think it made such an incredible difference because we travel, we were not worried about saving money and putting money out of our pockets. We would travel we traveled to Morocco, Dubai, uh, Lebanon, Spain, all Europe. Uh, we travel because we wanted to see these people person to person and develop this relationship. And if I had the opportunity to do it, and if the uh, economy helped during that month, I would take a trip and go there, visit uh, bookstores, visit people, market the magazine in that country. So we did the legwork literally through, you know, traveling in tents. If we couldn't, if we couldn't go to a hotel, it didn't, you know, I, we don't care. We can just go a tent and, and sleep there. Uh, we went to the desert. So we developed these relationships and it helped a lot. There's nothing you can do alone. Uh, so as entrepreneurs, that has been the, the, thing that I think I value most is networking and relationships. If you are doing something and you sincerely do it to help others and help yourself, of course, you're going to go far because the, the relationships are it, you know, when it comes to this. Uh, for Art to International, we could not do what we're doing without good relationships. With our artists, uh, when I started, we had about we had artists in about 50 something countries already because of the VR's network and in organizing exhibitions. So those same artists helped us spread the word and bring the magazines to their countries. And now we work with artists from all over the world. And the most beautiful thing is learning culture. So I think the underlying uh, goal here is always to have that intercultural exchange and showcase people that share people and teach the audience that we're all the same. You know, we should be at peace. Actually, we have a, a side um, nonprofit organization that is Create for Peace that came from Arthur International. And it's because teaching and showcasing the different cultures just brings us so much more uh, closer. So 
people help me and I help people. And that's how we brought Art to International to where we are. With a lot of work, studying a lot of marketing, which I had no idea back then how to do. Uh, <laughs> I started, I didn't know, but I know I had love and passion. I love people. And I think that translates into what we do. We love our clients. And I think that helps so much, really does. I have clients that we have, I mean, almost, I would say 80% of our clients have been with us since day one. Can you imagine? It's a family. So we created this culture of a family. I wanted to do something different and create something that was based on love and really wanting to, you know, the help and, and, the, and the return has been, you know, growing this magazine to this level. It really is. I, I believe a lot. I, I am a believer. A lot of people don't, you know, and I respect that. But I, I am a believer and I strongly believe the universe is just giving us back if we give back. So that energy, that love, you know, seeing the client as such a blessing. And, and I tell them, because they are really, artists are the most sensitive people in this world. They are so incredible. So we have brought this magazine all these years with uh, big uh, brands supporting us, just with the support of the artists. For me, that's the biggest accomplishment uh, ever. I don't measure success for the bank account uh, or I measure success for what we're able to do and, and how we're able to help others. And we have this help these artists get discovered in international platforms. Uh, so they keep helping us. They, they stay yeah. with us. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, I really, I really believe you hit the nail on the head when you're talking about relationships. And I think as entrepreneurs, with technology, we can get lost in, in making it, hey, let's just hop on a Zoom or let's just do everything through email or text message. or And, and so I own a digital marketing agency and, and I'm like, you know, when I first started, you know, it was almost like everybody was like, fake it till you make it. And, and I hate that mindset. And I also didn't like the fact that, you know, when I was reaching out to people, it was through email. And, and a lot of the, my first clients, you know, I didn't know them personally. And, and you can't build that trust or confidence with people and letting them know you're sincere. Um, I think everything gets lost in translation. So it is very important. And so what I did, my strategy with my digital marketing agency was to pull back and stay localized to where I can go and meet the clients um, and go and and because I saw a huge need for small businesses in my local area to go and reach out and build those relationships and take time and sit down with them face to face and let them know I do care. And one of those things, anytime they reach out to me, I'm there for them, you know, and they can talk to me directly. Yes, I have other individuals that work for me and, and there is a, a route to get to me sometimes. But when I go and talk to you personally and I give you a direct line of my number, you know, like you have, you can call me at any time. I want to keep that relationship and I want to follow up with you and talk to you. And really, again, that that helps you so much. It helps you tremendously because those clients have stayed compared to the ones I work with in the past. And not that not to say I don't have still clients this the other way, but it's not the same. And it's one of those like they can just leave at any moment. And like when COVID when COVID-19 hit. Right. Um, it was one of those. Boom. I lost. 80% of the clients that I had digitally without any relationship, just like that at a, at a blink of an eye. And the ones that I did form the relationship with, I was more understanding and I was also more able to retain most of the clients through this hard time because they, they trusted me. They asked me what I thought. Do we have to take a different approach? Can you help us pivot? And, and so they're more engaged in finding ways to help me stay with them and help them get further along. And again, that was all through relationships. Right. And it was one of those things that to build the confidence in the trust in me as an individual, just like you as an artist and, and, and you get in there doing the legwork. They're seeing you on the ground. They're able to touch you, give you a hug, say, hey, talk to you face to face. There's nothing more powerful than that. And there's nothing more powerful. Like you said, 80 percent of your business has stayed with you from day one just for that simple fact. And that right there, I can tell you, separates you from other people in the industry because you did the legwork, you were pitching tents, you were doing that and you and people were able to see you 
even when you you were like, look, I'm going, I'm going over here and, yeah. and I'm visiting. And that is so powerful. And I, I really um, commend you for taking the time and doing that. Yeah, no, we do um, actually get together once a year with the artists too. So they travel and we have an award ceremony that we celebrate every year. This year we haven't done it, of course. But for the first nine years we did and we would travel, get together, get about 60, 70 artists together. And and that makes such a big difference. The experience, you know, Maja um, D'Angelo says, um, you know what they say that she has. People will forget what you say. People will forget what you do. People will never forget how you make them feel. So if you're the head of a company or the head of a family, whatever it is, or the head of a network, just make sure you are aware of everything that comes out of your mouth and everything that you do and how are you making, how are you impacting this other person? Not seeing them as that's a client. Here I, you know, I we're separated we're one so if you hurt your client you're hurting yourself if you're faking love like you say don't fake it no just give it you know we all need it so why <laughs> not give it genuinely <laughs> exactly exactly so i i love your points and I, and I and i love your energy and i mean you you tell you can tell you're so sincere and you also talk about debunking the starving artist myth which is interesting because it does seem like it would be difficult to create a, sus a sustainable career full time as an artist. And you had people, family members or friends telling you like, you know, and then you were like, I have to go get a job and whatever it was, a nine to five to, to afford this career. But how are, were you able to change that paradigm and empower artists to live their dream? OK, the first thing I tell the artist is don't quit your day job which is the opposite of what everybody's going to tell you because you're going to be broke from one day to the other. And you're going to be so frustrated. It's just not going to work unless you have funds safe for you to support yourself for about a couple of years, but usually it's not the case. So you can do it slowly, which is what I did. I started over the weekends and then I did quit my day job, which is the <laughs> advice I'm not giving, but I did, and what I did was I found a part time and then I would stretch more time um, to develop. You have to market your work. You have to find there are so many different resources now, though, uh, that I didn't have back then. Like you can license your work so that it sells online. You can teach classes. You can even teach online now because Zoom is such a big boom right now and you can actually teach classes. So I split my time that way and you have to make yourself a goal, write it down. How many, how much money do I need each, each year or how much money do I need each month to support myself and how much money do I want? What type of lifestyle do I want? Do I care? Do I have to have luxury? Because if you do, then you need to work for more money. Uh, it all depends on, on your lifestyle and how, how much you want. And then split that into weeks and how much money do you need every week to support yourself? That's just the beginning. Pretty much having that money in mind and loving money, not seeing that as something negative. Money is a beautiful energy that allows you to do incredible things. Uh, and, and, you know, just have it and see it with that positive attitude. And write your goals. Okay, I need, I don't know, I need $500. Let me see what I can do each week so I can reach a thousand because you're going to be shorter always. So, and that's how I would do the beginning of anything. And I think it, it works. It works. Uh, for me, it was easy because I didn't care about luxury. I just didn't care. I really, I just wanted to have fun. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do have freedom of time to uh, spend more time with my family. So I did that. I had part-time jobs and while I was doing one thing and, and one thing led to the other and I developed my company, but you can do it too. And we are so trained um, that we have to depend on other entrepreneurs to find a job and make a living. 
And I think that's because we are used to, okay, it's the easiest way out. I'll just go there, come back, it's over. You're making somebody else money anyway. Uh, and you're just making ends meet. You're just barely making it. But if you are willing to work a little bit more and you're with, it's the same risk. I think Corona uh, pandemic, if there's something that we have learned this year is that there's risk in everything. If you're not willing to take a risk, then you're not going to live your life fully because you're going to, it's going to, it's a risk. No one, nothing is a hundred percent guaranteed. And we know that because a lot of people have lost a lot of jobs this year. So if you're depending on yourself, then you know that you have to create something new. Like, you know, your clients were telling, and that's what we're doing too. So what can we do different? Let me help you do something different now so that you can sell your works. And that comes from yourself because your boss is going to be worrying about himself, right? So that's pretty much it. It's willing to take a risk, create additional income sources, and make sure you have more than one income source. Even if it's one class here, I teach there, I do this, you have a schedule so that you have more time to do what you want to do and start studying and learning the most you can. Yeah, I love that. And as entrepreneurs, I think it's almost human nature though, to look for or try to find the get rich formula, right? When, when, especially when you're starting out, because we're like, how, how can I do this? How can I be successful as fast as possible? Oh, let me buy this course. This person is telling me that in a, in a, in a week I can make a couple thousand dollars. And, and then it's like you get into it and now you got to buy this or you got to do that. And then it's not exactly what you thought because they got you in the funnel. They said what you wanted to hear. It's like the shiny object syndrome. And now they got you in. And now it's like, oh, man, I got to spend thousands of more dollars or this and that. And then it's not and it's something you get burned out on. And that's why a lot of people today and I'm not faulting people for doing this, but sometimes a lot of those materials misleading. It gets you into the funnel. It gets you to spend money. And then to for the upgrade and the premium package for it to be done all for you. It's this. But then at the end of the day, it's like, OK, well, I can sit back. No, you actually have to work. And then a lot of people think that, OK, I bought this and now I can watch these videos that it's just going to happen. You have to get out there and hustle no matter what. You have to get out there and make it happen. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to put that extra effort. Nobody wants to be as successful as you do. So if you don't want to be successful and you have to and you have to write it down or do something or have that predetermined notion of like, OK, what is success to me? You know, where when when I get here, do I need to keep going or am I content? But I think as entrepreneurs, you always want to keep going because, again, once you get to that mountain peak or the top of that mountain, it's it never stops because it's like, okay, exactly. I've added all this value. I got to keep going. But like how important and, and, and this leads me into my next question. How important is it as a creative entrepreneur pursuing their dreams to trust the process and reach out to someone at, like yourself that can support them on their journey because you've been there and done that and let you coach them or share your experience with them? Yeah, I think it's, I have, I've had coaches myself. Um, I do not believe in the overnight promises. If something is too good to be true, then it's not real. You know, I never promise the artist, come, I'm going to coach you for a year. You're going to make a million dollars the next, because it's, it could be, it's not impossible. It all depends on you. Really, it all depends on you. But realistically speaking, it's better if you set goals that are realistic and they that you know they're gonna encourage you to do more and to do more. The the goal, the mountain keeps moving. I always say success is a moving target. It is a moving target because you're gonna be happy now, but then you realize you want more and you want more. My the training, the the coaching that I do with the artists is very much um basically helping them change their belief system that's the best the the first thing we do and that's the a chunk of it because most of what you do depends on on your belief system and this is here this is this is what 
Yeah, that's what decides your future this year. And that can allow you to do everything you want or will allow you to uh, be stuck, you know, whatever it is in here. So that's the first thing we do. We do a lot of my, my coaching program has to do, you know, with what you do, with what you think and what you should be doing. So I teach the three things. It's the, the technical part, the business part of the art world. But also, and most most of it is about your belief system. Why is it that you're not getting or you know reaching those goals that you want or those dreams? And you'll find out most of the time is one is your environment because that's <laughs> that's gonna affect you so much. The other one is the people in your life. Uh, the other one is your time. How are you investing your time? And, and the other one is, it's your heart. Where is your heart? Are you really doing what you want to do? So I think it's very important for artists, for any entrepreneur to learn and to learn from experts. But I don't believe in the quick, rich um, promises, the, the shiny, like you say, the, the shiny up. I, I don't believe in that. I believe on if I need to learn something, I'm going to choose what I want to learn. I, I need to learn marketing. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn that. I need to learn how to do social media better. I'm going to try to find out who is doing it really well. And it's not promising that, but it's really delivering. And then I'm going to learn from that person, but not going to all these, you know, funnels that they just keep, <laughs> they just keep bombarding you with emails and you're like, okay, so what do I do? And they're so good because, you know, there's um, really good psychology on copywriting and you're believing all that. And I do not practice that with my, uh, my artists. I do not do not use that because I think if you come to me uh, in a way that is deceiving for you, you're not going to be successful, number one you're not going to accomplish anything and then you're going to blame it on me. And this, here it goes my name. And one of the things that I've learned from the Bible is that your name is worth more than gold. And I put that into practice. So I really, I want, I want anybody that comes to my coaching program to make sure that they are accomplishing and they are, and I want to hear it because then it makes, it makes me feel that I'm, well, what I'm doing is worth it. You know? It's not, it's not just about exchanging money here. It's the value. It's the value that, that you're bringing to this person's life. At the end of the road, that's what it is. It's what difference do you make in this world when you came in and when you left? Do you leave it you know, better than when you came in, in a tiny little way? For sure. I mean, we all have value we can give, and it's the value added that really, at the end of the day, I, I, I try to get individuals that, you know, I do marketing and business consulting myself and so for for to talk to some of them about it it's like we hold ourselves back you know we're our own worst enemy to a lot of a lot of to an extent right and it's all about re rewiring your framework your belief system because it because it typically at eight, by age seven we already have ingrained because that between you know when we were born at age seven that's when we're most influenced by everything that goes around us so if we're seeing our parents live paycheck to paycheck and then we and then we grow up believing that's how we're going to live. I mean, that's ingrained into us and we're most likely going to fall into that pattern. But we have to take it upon ourselves to realize initially or, or find somebody out there that can lead you and coach you and tell you and help you rewire your belief system. I'm not saying totally transfer. OK, if you're a Christian, if you're this to, to work on that side, I'm just talking about your belief system and and. and and how you've seen people live their life and are really the ones that are going to have the most influence initially on you are the people that you grow up in your household. Um, so I think, though, I mean, that what comes with that is a lot of highs and lows. Right. And so from your experience, too, and through your entrepreneurial journey, we all experience the highs and lows. And you also talked about at the beginning of this episode that 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 was a deep, dark place for you. But through your but through your entrepreneurial journey to date, um, what has been the most difficult thing about being an entrepreneur and how did you overcome that to get work to where you are today? Yeah, I think that the most 
the most difficult in my case, it might different might be different for you. Because <laughs> I'm a woman. I'll tell you what, I'm a woman. So in my case, it was difficult to I'm an artist, a female artist, um, had no idea what I was doing. So being taken seriously in the industry at the beginning, I had people laughing at me when I said, you know, I would call them and you know, we have an art magazine, ha, 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 ha. you know, it's like, well, you have an art magazine. And that was the, the most difficult and the most challenging, I would say, part was having people take me seriously. And I did something that I, I, I'm, I'm going to reveal here, but that was, I had that experience for the first three months of our magazine and I got really, um, angry you know why are people so okay i made up this editor-in-chief it was a character that i created so i had this expert editor-in-chief hired by the company for a full year and that's how we got the magazine into a lot of different locations and the editor-in-chief was fake uh and then i got promoted (laughs) and then i revealed i'm like it was me all along so i did it you know um, but that was very challenging having people take it, take, and, and because we are in that culture, we still have that culture years after that artists are not, you know, they're just Bolivians. They, you have to be a business person to really success here. That that's the deal. But I think any entrepreneur deals with that challenge of people believing in you. And you have to overcome that and forget about it. Like you have to do this for yourself and forget about what anyone tells you because they're going to tell you, oh, you're a dreamer. Mm, I don't know if you can do all that. Maybe you should, don't shoot so far. You know, just don't aim that far. You might be disappointed at the end. You're going to hear all this. So that's the most challenging part at the beginning is to take off you have to fly. You have to fly high and forget about what everybody's telling you. I had people laughing at me. I had people telling me uh, I was crazy because I wanted to do things that maybe were not done before. But, you know, and, and you have to believe. One of the most beautiful things that I learned early was believing on what I was doing. And I learned that because when I tried to do things that I hadn't done before, I accomplished them. And the more you accomplish the the stronger that belief that that sense of security comes. And I always, I don't know if you've um, I've seen this little guy and we've probably seen it all. It's like a little guy that walks down or up the stairs or down the stairs and the step keeps appearing and he's like walking on air. That's what entrepreneurship is for me. It's taking the step, and just hoping that that believing the stuff is going to be there. And from time to time, you're going to fall. But, you know, get up and keep going because the step is going to be there still. So that was the most challenging part uh, at the beginning. And still, when I have big, you know, dreams, and I still have a lot of big dreams, believing and making sure that I shut every noise away i shut everything out i connect to my source and i yeah. know that it's gonna happen just because i believe it and right. it takes it takes time to develop that nerve right oh it takes time to develop that belief especially in yourself too because <laughs> there's a big thing we're all we're all either scared of success or that or we're we're afraid to fail and and so that that's a double-edged sword to an extent right there's a lot of people that are like, when I, when, if I succeed, I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do. We all want to succeed, but then, then they freeze. Or if I do this, or I take that leap of faith, or take that step and I fall, I, I'm going to fail. But I don't. Again, it's not failure as long as you keep going. The only time you fail is when you quit. And so again, it's that rewiring, that framework that we got to switch our belief system. And it's like, how many times have you failed? Well. I haven't failed yet because I'm going, I'm still going, right? Like when, when I, when I quit and I decided to do something else, maybe that business failed 
But as long as you continue to pivot and continue to move forward and continue to refine your systems and find that niche or find that thing you love, continue to move forward. You're not going to fail. And, and but there are there is failure along the way. Right. But I'm not saying that it, it, you have to just again, the way you rewire it, the way you view it, you have to believe in yourself, because, again, the only person that wants you to see more than you, there's not one out there. Right. Like. Your, your, your loved one might want to say they you know want you to succeed, but there's a lot of loved ones that hold people back and say that you're crazy for doing this. You're going to fail. I tried that and I didn't and I wasn't successful, but they quit. Right. They failed. But as long as you continue to move forward, that's all that matters at the end of the day, um, especially as an entrepreneur. But you also got to add that value along the way. You can't just think about me, me, me. Like you have to really be in it and be genuine about it. You have to have that belief that you're going to add value or find a way to add that value for people to where it's like, okay, at the end of the day, I'm adding this value because I really and I'm genuine right now. I want people to believe in me. I want people to believe that I'm being genuine and really want to add value in a way that I feel like an add value. But if you're not being genuine, people are going to see that they're going to see through the BS. They're going to see that you're you're all you do is want is money, you know, and it's like that person is not real. I don't want to be around that. And you're not going to ever be able to build that following like you have. And I commend you like having that fear and, and seeing and, and having that frustration of one being an artist and getting laughed at, being a female and getting laughed at, but not being taken seriously and having all those those insecurities to an extent to where it's like, Hey, I have to make up this fake position, but guess what? Ta-da, it's me, you know, and, and you're and you made it through that. And that right there is just powerful. And I love your story. And and that's why I wanted you on this show. Like when you reached out and I looked, I was like, absolutely, we would love to have Viviana on our show. I mean, just because of everything I can see that like it takes a different mind when you're when you are an artist. A lot of people don't give themselves credit about when they create something about being that entrepreneur because they can't make that connection but you are a creative entrepreneur and you keep creating your reality that's why we don't understand we have to create our reality right and that when when you do that because you believe in something so powerfully and you believe that you're adding so much value you have to be creative you have to be creative in your approach and keep creating the life that you want to achieve and it doesn't have to be material things it can just be continuing to be hey this is what i'm meant to do i found my niche i found what i want to do for the rest of my life and i'm happy and content right here and if it is material things at the end of the day that's fine right right you know ah oh, that's so profound you just said because it's it's what i believe I think that's if we can if we can teach if we can share people with people this this thought success is not about money it's not about money it's it's more it's what gets you connected to the universe to that source and what makes you feel happy that's your mission in life, to be happy. What makes you happy? Do it. Because that's that's how you're going to serve the universe. That's how you're going to serve people. Your service is what makes you happy. And that's it. That's it. You know, we believe all these things. And I'm, I don't have anything against money. I love money. <laughs> I love money. But I believe that we have... We are so connected to this material uh, mentality of the more I have, the more I have, the more I have. And I tell you, because I have traveled so many locations. I travel a place in, in Lebanon, uh, in the border with Syria, and I never forget how happy these kids, these are refugees. And I went, they invited me to a tent. And I remember going to this tent and these women had this tent, like it was the most luxurious house. They were so happy. These kids were playing like they were in a mansion. They were so happy, so content. And I have met people in the desert that have told me nothing will get me out of here. Because I would, I would ask them, so why, how do you feel about traveling always from one tent to the other? They have to keep moving. 
And I remember one night we're looking at the skies and the guy said, you see, what would buy this? There's no money that would give me this. So it's all about how much you love, how connected you are to yourself, how connected you are to this universe, how connected you are to nature, which we underestimate a lot. But, you know, try walking in nature more often and you'll discover where success really is. For sure. I totally agree. And Viviana, as we wrap up this episode, I mean, this has been this has been a pleasure of mine and I've loved every minute of it. If you could leave our listeners with just one piece of advice, what would that be? This is on these are entrepreneurs I'm talking about. Okay, so these are entrepreneurs already. If you already discover what you love to do, do it. Believe in yourself and just do it. But make sure that you rearrange your life, the people are in it, what you do in your time to lead to success. Set yourself up for success. Don't let anything, anybody, not even yourself, sabotage your journey. And, and that happens very often. If you have not discovered what you want to do yet and you want to serve and you're doing something that you're not, you, you're not sure, take time to think about what would be the ideal day for you. What would be the perfect day? What would you be doing that day? If it was the last day and you wanted to enjoy something, what would it be? And discover what you want to do and do it. Just do what makes you happy. Just just do what makes you happy. And that's success. Uh, don't worry about every, anything else. Just devote yourself to what makes you happy. Because if it makes you happy, then you have passion to do it every day. And it's never going to be Monday to Friday. You're going to do it. You're going to be making whatever money, but you're going to be doing this seven days a week, even if you don't get paid because you love it so much. Yeah. Which happens. <laughs> happens sometimes, right? For sure. <laughs> No, that, I mean, I think that's so powerful what you just said. And I think that's a wrap for this episode. And from me and I know Andrew, we're both thankful for you taking the time out of your day to join us and adding value in what we're doing on our podcast. So, Viviana, I, I really appreciate you being here. And um, that, that, just everything you've added to our show is, is I know our viewers is, are going to love every minute of it. Thanks. Thanks, Clint, so much. That was fun. I really connected with you there so yeah for sure so guys <laughs> thank you so much for listening to that entrepreneurial life to learn more about what viviana is working on check out her website at viviana puello.com that is v-i-v-i-a-n-a-p-u-e-l-l-o.com if you like what you heard today make sure to subscribe to our podcast on itunes or any other major podcast directory you can also find us on all the socials on our website at thatentrepreneurlife.com. And with that said, we also want to quickly give a special shout out to our family and friends to include all of our listeners, our followers, and subscribers. Thanks for continuing to support what we do as entrepreneurs. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. Thanks for listening to That Entrepreneur Life podcast. Be sure to visit thatentrepreneurlife.com to join the conversation, access our show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode as we continue to add value. Until next time.